welcome to another edition of Douglas on My Mind Show. And we have a great program in store for you for the month of February. We have uh, some of the members of ESG, and uh, they're going to explain to us what that acronym means. But uh, they're here today to talk about their endeavor to uh, take over our operations of our water and wastewater operations here for the city of Douglas. You may have heard about that. So we'll be right back after these messages. back with more Douglas on my mind. Uh, once again, this is a great program that we have in store for you. I, I think I probably say that every time, but I truly can say we got a great program for you today. You learn some uh, better insight about this new uh, initiative that we've embarked on with our uh, water and wastewater department. Uh, they're now being operated by ESG, which is a firm out of uh, Macon, Georgia, but they have some presence in South Georgia, which we greatly appreciate. And uh, glad to have on the show today with Mr. Tony Johnson to my far right. Thank you. And he's uh, vice president of ESG. Mm -hmm. And Mr. John Edelman, uh, I might have beat your name up. That's not yeah. you, you got it. <laughs> All right, I got it. I, I, I nailed it. Uh, senior vice president of ESG. And give us the acronym, what ESG means. I know that's the short Yeah, you know, P and we get asked this quite a lot. Yeah. But uh, when we uh, started ESG, Clay Sykes and Dan Grissel started mm -hmm. the company back in 2002 when we started as an engineering company. Mm -hmm. And our name was Environmental Services Group. Okay. Um, and so the ESG, uh, the acronym is Environmental Services Group. And we've since, uh, when we started up ESG operations, it's just that. It's ESG just operations. Just stayed that way that's ever correct. since that point. That's oh, that's great. All right. That was started in 2003. 2003. And you may start seeing some of the uh, uh, employees that we have about, about 25, 26 employees now that go on to work for ESG, uh, which they are enjoying that an endeavor as far as that transition. I believe we transition those employees from working with the city now working with ESG February, I mean, January the 1st in that regard. So, uh, and uh, so you tell us a little bit about your history, kind of expound on that in regards to where you uh, started from, I think I said Macon area, and where you've grown the business from That's in that correct. regard. We, as I said, we, uh, Clay Sykes and Dan Grissel started the company in mm -hmm. 2002, and uh, as we mentioned before, started as an engineering company. And then uh, in 2003, the city of Vidalia, Georgia, uh, contacted us and asked if we would be interested in uh, taking over their operations of their public works, utility and public works department. Wow. So in 2003, uh, we started ESG operations with Vidalia, Georgia being our first client. Since that time, uh, we currently serve over 20 communities in the Southeast, uh, have over 500 employees, um, and with Douglas being our, our newest addition to that, to that team. As you mentioned, we have quite a presence in South Georgia. We have Tifton uh, and Waycross, uh, which are, are nearby. And so those are, that's a huge benefit to the city of Douglas having uh, all those resources nearby. Right. And one of the things, uh, and to help the, the citizens of Douglas appreciate, we, we bid at this process out. Uh, they were one of, I think, four or five uh, uh, firms that put in their proposal for this in regards to operation. And kind of backing up, kind of giving the city's perspective of this as we looked at this endeavor, uh, to privatize, if you will, uh, operation. Uh, we still own the assets. Uh, we still are in charge with dealing with the rates in regards to water and wastewater. So we, we still have that responsibility, similar to what we have with sanitation, with trans waste. But we, we, we were looking at uh, trying to leverage our operations in a way that helps give us more capacity. Uh, we don't have engineers on staff. 
to that level, we normally have contracted out from year to year with different engineering firms to try to help us deal with whatever aspects of that. So we were looking at trying to also leverage other operational functions such as you know some of the technicians that y'all have now I think uh, which y'all have the capacity to bring in all those individual That's technicians right. to help leverage uh, whatever uh, experiences that they have in regards to fixing, maintaining, and addressing those types of things. So we, just having that depth was important to us. So that's why we sought to do this. And also there's a there's a other silver line. There's an opportunity to save a little bit of money. That's right. That's right. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be in that endeavor. I think Waycross and Tifton have gotten what, what we call rebates or uh, actually cost savings back in regards to their endeavor with y'all and so we're hoping to see those savings as well and we don't want know what that is yet but we're we're hoping that it's going to be at least six figures somewhere in that neighborhood uh yeah. seven would be great That's but right. i understand let's just well, stick with six right we're now getting we're getting close yeah. <laughs> in the we're first actually, 30 days yeah, yeah. we're well on our way and, and and i'm glad you brought up the, the point about our our uh our focus on technology and that's really the mm. The thing that differentiates us from the other companies that do this is our approach, our scientific approach to utility operations and management. We are engineers, and, 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 and having an understanding of how systems are designed and constructed gives us a unique ability to come in and actually operate them. And uh, just to give you a highlight of some of the things we've done in the first 30 days here about cost savings, we were able to, to do some repairs to some of your underground buried infrastructure that in the past you didn't have the capability to do because you didn't have the in-house resources or the tools to do those repairs. With us having leveraging our uh, operations in Tifton and Waycross and elsewhere, we were able to do these things in-house and fix these pipes and uh, these lift stations um, and it saved well in excess of over $50,000 in the first 30 days and those are things that you would have had to contract out uh, to fix it. Right. So we're, we're well on our way to, to, re to realizing those cost savings. Right. Two of those projects, the first one was the airport uh, lift station where we installed a critical bypass to help keep the flow mo moving the way it should move. And the other right. project was the, uh, was it Pope Road, John? That's right. it, it was yeah. a, there was a sewer main that collapsed that uh -huh. when we were kind of going through our due diligence. And so we were able to get on top of that and fix that in-house right. without outsourcing like you right. normally would do. Right. right. And that's been the biggest saving grace because y'all can, uh, mobilize uh, you know individuals from Tifton I think also far as up as uh, Perry and That's some right. other areas uh, middle Georgia I think y'all also in Alabama is, is that right we are in Opelika uh, Opelika right. yeah uh, go war eagle that's where my daughter went to school at so I had to throw that That's little right. shout out for her. Uh, but anyway uh, having those resources those those technical experts engineers at the firm up there in Macon obviously gives us more depth than we had before and that's the critical thing uh, some of y'all citizens know we run out I didn't share this with John and and uh, uh, Tony uh, just mm -hmm. earlier we've been running on our local television station uh, liquid assets you may have heard about what we yeah. done. liquid yeah. assets is a program trying to help citizens understand that water and wastewater are some of the critical things and stormwater as well that we have to deal with and a lot of cities have uh, neglected that over time have not put the resources to bear mm -hmm. in addressing that and we were we were looking as a community uh, we had an engineering firm years ago now it's Jacob engineers was JJ and G you may have heard of them mm -hmm. they help us develop a water and wastewater master plan which we have which encompasses about a hundred and twenty million dollars worth of infrastructure mm -hmm. improvements over the next 20 to 25 years as you can appreciate we were looking at probably over 110% of increases of water and wastewater uh, mm. to help pay for that. Yeah. So, you know, that's very challenging for us to go up that high on sure. our citizens. So by helping leveraging y'all, that hopefully helps us save in costs that we would normally mm. pay out to, to whatever right. uh, contract or whatever mm -hmm. to help us address some of these issues that were so critical. So that's another piece to the puzzle that we probably uh, need to share with our citizens that hopefully this this relationship is going mm -hmm. to help us cut down some of the costs we would have had to pay through that initiative in that regard. So we we just want to be able to charge some competitive rates to our citizens so that they can hopefully sustain good quality water and hopefully when they flush mm -hmm. it goes where it's supposed to right. and gets treated and goes back mm -hmm. into the rivers and streams that it should be. So tell us a little bit more about uh, 
your operation side. I know, like you said, y'all are in a couple other communities. Uh, what are some of the things y'all looking to do down the road? I know y'all have done some assessments and y'all got some plans about next we year, are. physical year as far as that. We do. And really, the, as I mentioned before, the cornerstone of what we're doing in Douglas, um, of course, operating and maintaining mm -hmm. your water and wastewater treatment plans. But how do we position the city and the community to prepare for these future, the future growth, but also the, you know, you've got a lot of, of pipes and pumps in the ground that need to be replaced and they're expensive. And we always say that, that in, a, in a city, in a community like Douglas, you probably have no other great, no greater other asset than your utility system in terms of importance to the community, but also in terms of cost. So what our goal is, is through uh, our engineering approach, we're going to come in and, and, and value, evaluate all of your assets and determine what condition they're in. And by doing that, we're going to be able to tell you with a, a reasonable level of accuracy how much you need to spend over the next 15 or 20 years, not to go put a new plan in or a new lift station, but just to maintain what you have. And uh, how we can generate millions of dollars of savings for our community is how can I take that asset, that wastewater treatment plant, that you're planning on replacing or repairing in the next 10 years, how can I make that last another five years? How can I take that lift station that's a fifteen or $20,000 lift station, make it last for five or six more years? And the simple analogy that we always use is cities have historically taken the approach to maintenance like a person with their car. Instead of changing the oil and doing the routine maintenance, they just buy the engine when it blows up. So our approach to maintenance is, doing the things every day, the preventative and predictive maintenance, mm -hmm. so I can take that asset and extend its useful service life, which saves you money. All right. Well, obviously, you know, one of the things that we've been looking at is uh, in our budget coming up is we have projects uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, currently, right now, that is so critical with the maintenance that y'all are looking at, but we got bigger capital projects that we're going to be looking at down the road. Now, part of uh, the operations is the capital piece that we currently still have with us. But hopefully, as this relationship increases, mm -hmm. that might be another opportunity uh, to look at that down the road. Uh, you know, this community is so fortunate that we uh, tapped in. That's, I think that's Johnny's phone going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, this community has been so fortunate that they got behind a splash uh, and they committed to the city to help out with water and sewer at the tune of about 67% of our splots, which means about $20 million, about $18, $20 million. So we were able to infuse that. So we got splosh monies and we do have rate monies, as I tell my mayor commission. Mm -hmm. We got two buckets of funds. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to be as efficient as we possibly can with both of those buckets. So y'all are really basically right now helping us a lot with the rate monies because mm -hmm. that's the most critical piece that uh, our citizens get impacted with Absolutely. because when they pay the bill, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's where it kind of stings a little bit when they have a little increase sure. in rates in regards. So if we can save those dollars and maintain those structures a lot longer, it all helps us in the long run. So uh, we appreciate that. Well, uh, we got some information. I think Tony's going to talk about some of the community things and how ESG plans to get involved and a lot of stuff. And we pre that, appreciate them being a great community partner already uh, have been jumping in here, helped mm -hmm. us with the uh, certified literacy program, had, mm -hmm. uh, was a major uh, you know, supporter welcome. of that. So we're going to be back right back after these messages. back with more Douglas on my mind and once again I have with me John and Tony and they're here from ESG and we've been talking about all the things they have been engaged with since January 1 and they've been here a good month and uh,